Okay, thank you all for joining us today. My name is Kelly Graham with University Conference Services. We're thrilled to have you all with us. And we're really grateful to Jason Chepnick and Joe DiBello of Chapnick Financial who are have partnered with us on this webinar and are going to be presenting ways that you can engage your plans participants uh, in new ways. First, just a couple of housekeeping announcements. For the best audio, we do recommend listening through your computer speakers. Also, there is a short video during the webinar. If you are listening in on the phone, you won't hear the sound for just that one short video. Um, if you have questions or comments to share with Jason or Joe, please go ahead and type them in on the Q&A pane on the right side of your screen. What you type in is private and will not be seen by other attendees. We are going to be recording today's webinar and we'll share the link with the, of the recording with you tomorrow via email. And in that email will also be the HRCI, SHRM, and CPE credit information if you are um, particularly interested in that. Only participants of the complete live webinar will um, be entitled to that continuing uh, education credit information. And with that, I will let Jason and Joe just jump right in and take it away. Uh, thank you, Kelly and Kim. We really appreciate being part of today's presentation, and thank you all for attending. Again, feel free to, uh, any questions pop up, go ahead and type them in the question box, and we'll try to address it as we go through the presentation, or at the end, if we have a couple minutes, we'll address them there. So I'm Jason Shepnick. I'm the managing partner for Shepnick Financial, and I'm here with my associate, Joe DiBello who is one of our senior retirement plan consultants. Um, and our presentation today is Poke the Bear, Change the Way We Engage Participants. It really was Poke the Bear, Waking Up Hibernating Participants. Though the last couple of months with the markets moving around, it looks like we've woken up some of them. But how do we take what used to be done in the workplace and how do we present new ideas so that our retirement plan clients or their most important asset, which is their participants, become more engaged in something that historically they really just not paid attention to, which is why automatic enrollment and other plan designs have worked so well. So first let me tell you a little bit about Shepnick Financial. Uh, the, the, the big news is that Shepnick Financial was acquired in uh, January and we're part of One Digital, which is the nation's largest health and welfare broker. As a whole, it was Shepnick Financial and 11 of our peers. We managed about $40 billion in total plan assets of which 95% of is working with company retirement plans. We represent more than 500,000 retirement plan cons uh, participants across the country. Our own group between me and Joe and my team, we represent about 125,000 participants. And we, uh, in fact, we're approaching 2,500 retirement plans that we provide services to. And, and I get to always highlight my dog since we are working in an office environment and Sebastian is in the background if he wakes up and he starts to bark, please know that's just Sebastian giving his pointers on uh, what he thinks he should be talking about today. When we have Zoom and WebEx and GoTo, he seems to be more, you know, he likes to have his voice heard more often than he used to, so I apologize in advance. In terms of who uh, Chepnick Financial and now we're part of One Digital are, we are part of this uh, collection of, of retirement plan advisors. These are awards that my team has won uh, specific to the work that we've done in the retirement plan space. And it's really nice to be acknowledged for the work we've done. We couldn't do it without great clients who have had the courage to implement new ideas, many of which I'm going to showcase to you today. In fact, I'm going to show you some of our best ideas. Some of these same best ideas is what won us plan sponsors, retirement plan advisor of the year in 2019. And we've also been named as one of the top uh, consultants across the country. In 2018, we were named the number one campaign by Plan Sponsor Council of America. Uh, in fact, 2019 as well, I'm going to show you that idea for participating with, with, uh, with, with, uh, with, com with communicating with participants, excuse me. And um, we just have a lot of fun. You're going to hear it my voice. You're going to hear it with Joe. And, and we hope to have a lot of fun today as we walk through some of our best ideas. So we're going to kick off today's webinar with a quick polling question, and you can likely see the question on your screen right now. And the question is, are in-person group meetings effective at delivering retirement plan education? 
And we'll give everyone a few minutes to answer that, that polling question. All right, well, we can see some of the results coming in. All right, so you know, as it stands now, we have 90% of those polled still believe that in-person group meetings are effective at delivering retirement education, with a smaller subset um, electing no. And it's an important topic for our conversation today, especially given not only what's gone on in the world the last few months, but the ever-changing expectations of employees and participants in how they receive and engage with information. So while we still feel there's a place for, for in-person group meetings as an effective means of delivering education, today's environment, today's consumer expects a certain level of personalization. So today we're going to share some, some topics, some, some strategies that you all can use both in in-person meetings as well as one-to-one -one contacts, whether that be through one-on-one -on -one consultations or education campaigns. We're going to take that Amazon effect where, you know, a consumer today logs in and has a carefully curated list of products based on their interests, and we're going to apply that same logic to how your participants want to hear and learn about the retirement plan. You're going to hear a lot about culture, customization, branding, and, and that's some of the knowledge we hope to impart on the participants today. So I'll start with FinTech. Um, FinTech is uh, financial technology. And there's just a ton of innovation. Uh, there's been so much investment in new participant websites and uh, apps and, and just new ways to do things to, uh, to get people to take action. It's got a lot of attention, but it feels like the one place that hasn't really gotten a whole lot of attention when it comes to innovation and new ideas is delivering education other than the typical once a quarter, once a year, upon you know, eligibility, we sit in a room in a classroom setting uh, to deliver information. And while I, we happen to agree that in the past doing group settings has worked, the world has changed. And we may not be able to sit in a room together to host meetings like we did in the past. And even then when we hosted them, we always have liked to be able to measure the impact of that meeting right then and there. And so sometimes those group meetings, when you've got plans that have auto features, it's very difficult to measure were we making a difference by having a group session meeting or not? And so we thought we'd showcase some new ideas uh, using this world uh, of innovation. And, and one of the easy ideas that you can immediately use to augment your group meetings is something that we've been experimenting with our education team on, which is allowing participants who are in that meeting, and our, our next slide will, will allude to that to some extent, to use their mobile devices and smart devices. As anyone that's held a group meeting in the past couple of years can probably attest, it, it's very difficult to get um, participants and employees' attentions away from those mobile devices. So let's use them. And an effective way of creating custom content that engages your participant is to utilize one of the many free services out there that an employee can download on their iPhone while in that group meeting and provide immediate feedback in the, in the form of polling, similar to what we're doing here today, to have an understanding of what type of topics does the audience want to hear about, give feedback on the conversation that's being had, and allow that person delivering that education to continue to fine tune and tweak the message to make sure it's hitting home with your employees. So, I mean, this that also showcases how much time people spend talking about their finances versus being on social media. Well, that's changed somewhat because people are home, they're looking up their account because the market's all over the place. I used to use the stat that, I used to use Angry Birds as my stat, though people don't play Angry Birds as much, but still they go on Instagram or Facebook or other social media, and they do that twice as much as they look at their 401k account balance. It's, I'd say shocking, but I think for everybody on this call, and if you have kids, uh, even my parents, it really isn't that shocking we look around to see where they're spending their time, and it's not on making sure they're accomplishing their retirement hopes, dreams, and, and goals. So innovation, as I mentioned before, FinTech led to innovation. Innovation is the introduction of a new idea, method, or device. And one of the best things we can do is bring new ideas to our clients. And where the industry has done an incredible job of, of investment innovation with target date funds, right, or advisor managed accounts, uh, or, uh, uh, you know, looking at, um, the monthly income you might get in retirement rather than my account balance 
or new technology, new website, there hasn't been a whole lot of innovation when it comes to uh, educating employees. So we're going to show you some of those ideas. And the goal is to wake up those hibernating participants, and we're going to have fun doing it. So everybody in this call has probably heard about the three Fs, right? Most retirement plan consultants only focus on the three Fs. And they're going to bring attention to fees. Do we have the lowest? Do we have competitive fees? Are the funds the appropriate funds for our lineup? Are they uh, being the benchmarks? And are they fitting within our risk profiles? And also fiduciary governance. These are the common three Fs for our industry. And I'm going to add a fourth one. After today, you're going to add a fourth F, maybe a fifth one. But a fourth one would be fun, because it's the having fun is what brings your plan to life. And it's what can make the difference between a plan that is just sort of operating as it was. We're using auto features and the same investments versus one that people brag about and laugh about. And when they want to stick at your company, they remember the retirement plan as being an important part of why they're affiliated with your organization. So I put up here notorious BIG, mo money, mo problems. Yes, that's true. But if we can use relevant terms or people, um, uh, or make them laugh, we typically can have better engagement. So I'm going to kick off um, my idea sharing with what was perhaps our most famous idea, and it was, there's Sebastian waking up in the background, but uh, it's the Feed Your Future campaigns, and so I think we all know if you feed them, they will come. And so uh, while I took that same concept of feeding them, I want to connect the dots to retirement plans, so we came up with the following idea. This is a real taco truck. This is the Let's Talk About Retirement Food Truck. This is a legit food truck that has great tacos and would go to our clients or prospects or sit in their parking lot. And this is the exact messaging we came up with for our clients, participants. Let us freshen up your future. Put away a little extra just in queso. Be reckless with your sauce, nacho savings. Sign up now or you'll be living La Vida Broca. I'm hoping that each of you are chuckling or laughing, but this is the actual material that we use for our plans, and we've taken this food truck to different places. And the idea is if you sign up for the retirement plan or if you're participating, you get a free taco. If not, you get rice and beans because that's all you can afford to eat in retirement if you're not saving much. And so we would get a lot of laughter out of it, but the truth is it would make an impact. It would also have an impact by something else. So a lot of record keepers today have these social comparison tools where they'll say, are you saving as much as the person sitting next to you? Well, back in the day, we used to call it the water cooler effect. You stand around the water cooler and you have various conversations. The same thing happens here. As people are standing in line or enjoying their food, they get to talk about, are you in the retirement plan? Are you in the retirement plan? What's shaking? And then my team or the record keeper is usually inside the food truck passing out the tacos. We keep them in you simple so the line runs pretty quick, and we have fun with it. Um, and we, we've actually come up with other ideas as well. So just to let you know, we're not a, a one-stop shop. We have a Taco Bao food truck, which is an Asian taco. I will brag that the food of our Let's Taco Bao retirement Asian hot buns was tastier than our other tacos. We even have come up with pho1k, though it didn't make its way to production yet, where we serve pho, like soup, uh, and have fun with it as it goes from place to place. It, and while this is certainly a, a fun and engaging way to get your participants involved in your retirement plan, uh, there was a lot of thought process behind this. And I, I know on your screen that the, the font and the typeface might be a little small, but in order to make this work, we incorporated elements of choice architecture and behavioral finance two topics that we learn more and more about each and every coming year, and, and really that speaks to getting inside the head of your participants and understanding how they behave when it comes to financial decisions. So if you can read the print, you'll notice the check boxes that we put on the quick enrollment cards um, start at 3%, 7%, and 9%, and that was done by design. Most participants, when faced with a choice, you know, low, medium, and high, tend to choose that middle ground option. And by looking at the plan data and using data to support this decision, this particular company had a 3% match. And we knew if we could drive participants to elect a 7% savings rate, that with the employer match, they'd be right in that sweet spot for an adequate retirement savings. So again, some thought went into this. And, and we also used 
choice architecture for participants who wanted to opt out as well. You'll notice with the approval of the, the, the client, instead of just simply opting out of the plan, the participant read the words, no, I don't want to save for my future. So by, by providing them immediate uh, consequences or immediate realization of, of the long-term results of their actions, it, it provides those simple nudges in the right direction so that we can make the easy choice for your participants the right choice. Now, um, I will say we all know the world has changed on us, and there may be some time till many of us and many of you are able to have a bunch of employees to gather in one location or to stand in line at a food truck. And so there are other ways to deliver and have the same type of impact. You can certainly deliver a, a, a food card, a gift card, a Grubhub, Uber Eats, anything, that, or have tacos sent to your employees or newly eligible and have the same impact with a message about let's talk about retirement. So the next big idea we'll call it is making it special, making it yours, and that's called branding it. And so a lot of record keepers do a lot of great work to make these, record, to make these plans operate the right way. But at the end of the day, they shouldn't get credit for the work that you've committed and invested in to make this plan keep your employees around for a long time and hopefully retire comfortably. So we always want to make sure the messaging, the branding is about you, not the record keeper. Uh, and not us or your advisor. It should always be you and your company. So create custom URLs. For example, and this is a live one, Chepnik Financial, and we were recently acquired, so our K-Plan is rolling into the new one. But if you type in ChepnikFinancial41k.com, we used Empower, it was a direct link to the participant website. So it, it doesn't matter what kind of company you are, if it's ABC Carpet Care, you could be ABC Carpet Care41k.com. Or if you had a tagline that most companies in your community are familiar with your tagline, um, whatever it is, growmygrass.com as a landscape company, you could put growmygrass41k.com. And for $10, you can do a direct link. Your record keeper will not charge you for this because you can buy it and redirect it yourself. It costs maximum 10 bucks to do this idea, and you can redirect it yourself. We can show you how. And then you own the URL. You protect it from others who are trying to get your plan. And if you ever change record keepers, you get to keep the same URL. That's the beauty of it. If you go from Fidelity to Vanguard to Empower to a census, if I always had ChepnerFinancial41k.com, I always was, was able to communicate to my employees, just log in here and I'll take you right to where you have to go to. The same thing holds true when it comes to wellness program or well-being program. I had a client, doesn't matter the name, but uh, they had a, a, wellness, a wellness program called company healthy living. We came up with company wealthy living. It wasn't that much brain power to come up with. But once we customized it and it fit the company's brand, it became theirs. Even though we used third-party providers to provide the well-being programs, it was tailored to their company. Uh, we call this managing the message, and we made sure that everything fit that company's culture. Um, the last one is super important also, and that's use authentic images. I think everybody can laugh that this is the most common picture of what retirement looks like to people. And uh, I know a lot of retired people, and I know a lot of happy people. I don't typically see people that look like this in retirement every single place. There are people from same sex, same gender. There are people with tattoos and facial hair, and there's people that aren't smiling, but they're together for 40 years, and there are people that are single and, and having retirement life like that. And retirement can be as fun sitting on the front porch playing with your kids or grandkids as it is jumping on a sailboat, but yet our industry st tends to use imagery that's associated with a movie in our head of what retirement looks like to them. So this next idea that I have for you, and again, you get to take all these ideas and run with them, is an example of visualization. And so before we play this video for you, the idea behind this one is have everybody in your company produce a one-minute video of what retirement looks like to them. And I mean everybody from the president, CFO, down to the person who works in your uh, in, uh, this you know, is what in the mail room. Looks like so to let's play this video and I'll walk you through what it accomplished. Like this, this is me. Or sit in a hammock just like this. But wherever it's going to be, it's going to be nice and chill. I get to walk up and down the beach, I get to read books, I get to cook up and grill up outside. I can make a garden like I love. I can also open up an art studio down the street and teach kids or maybe other adults 
how to be creative and just explore and enjoy and have fun. Perhaps even the beach isn't this one, it's something else around the world. As I travel, one of my most favorite things to do is to check out other places. So retirement to me is far more peaceful and enjoyable and time just to reflect. But definitely I look forward to it and I can't wait to get to it. So thanks for showing the video. The purpose of the video was multifold. So the reason, so this idea was have your company challenge your employees to produce a video and give away a prize to whoever produces the best retirement video. They can do it from their phone or tablet. It doesn't have to be anything over creative or a little PowerPoint if they were more creative, but make it one minute or less. A lot of things can be accomplished in this. First of all, it's a free idea. You can do this and implement it yourself and have fun with it. You could set up a YouTube video, a YouTube channel, and just put all of your employees' videos up. You can have a judge of your three employees, and they get to pick out whoever the winner is and give away a prize. In fact, I'll challenge each of you. If any of you implement this idea in your company, I will give away an iPad to whichever employee has the best for each of your organizations. It's that much fun to see this come to life that people enjoy it and makes a difference and focuses on the retirement plan. So the things that are accomplished here are accountability. Once I said it out loud, I know what I'm trying to accomplish. It's a whole lot easier for me as an advisor to help figure out what's going to happen. Right, so accountability. I put my foot in the sand and I said, you know what, I want to have, I want to live at the beach and I want to open up an art school. Um, so I now know what that looks like. I visualized it. The self-reflection is in a year from now, I can play the video again, or my company can play the video again, and show me how and say how much closer am I to accomplishing that goal? Or even more fun is what about in five years from now to play that video back and say how much closer am I? And the best of all is it helps me as an advisor do the math to help me get there. Now I'm talking about myself in this scenario. But if it was Joe that did the video, I could sit down with Joe and say, Joe, in order for you to live at the beach, you know, on the beach, it's going to cost you whatever, a million bucks. And how old are you? You're 32 years old, and you have to save this much money to accomplish that goal. And, hey, to supplement your retirement income, you're going to have this art school. Well, that's pretty neat. What's the cost to run an art school? What's rent going to be? What, how many employees are you going to have? What are supplies cost? where you'd be located, and that can help figure out how to make that a viable retirement for whoever runs this idea. So I love this idea a lot. We've had a whole bunch of companies do it, and I would love for the companies listening today to do the same thing, and if you let us know, I will certainly provide the prize because it really is impactful, and I can prove out that it works because people will be talking about it for a long time. And what's key is they're not talking about stocks or bonds. They're not talking about record keeping or the match. They're just talking about what it looks like for them in retirement. So it's a great idea. And I'll just add, it really, the visualization aspect of it is really impactful, especially for maybe younger pockets of your workforce that, that don't see retirement as something that is an um, immediate concern. Maybe they're 30, 40 years out. And I believe it was Prudential that a few years back uh, used a, a mobile app of some sort that allowed participants to uh, look at themselves and what they'd look like 30, 40 years from now to age them, right? And what they found was by connecting that visualization to their future self, it, it significantly increased action in the retirement plan. So again, this, this whole concept of visualizing a goal and then having the accountability to be able to work towards that goal it not only helps folks that are closer to retirement, but can also help engage your younger demographic as well. All right, the next idea, another fun one, is a happy hour. What's your happiest hour? The happiest hour is the day you start, is the last hour of your work, right, when you finally get to uh, go have fun and enjoy the rest of your life. And so what if you threw a happy hour retirement party starting at 4 or 1 in the afternoon? Or if you're a 4 or 3B plan, I guess you can start at 4 or 3 in the afternoon. In today's day and age, I've done lots of happy hours with Zoom. I'm sure each of you have as well. It could be as effective doing it with Zoom too. And 
when you're happy hour, who are you celebrating? You're celebrating the retirement plan. And the same thing, you can have people celebrate with tacos or pizza or hot dogs or drinks. Or you can do something similar here. You can say everybody has to post a picture of their favorite retirement thing. And it could be a beach. It could be a picture of a place they want to travel to. It could be anything, a still picture that represents retirement. And you can have the exact same impact as my previous video with only one request, one still picture, and you can have cocktails with your employees if you're allowed to do so, and you can have as much fun celebrating that retirement plan and reminding them, then take five minutes at the end to say, listen, our company plan is great. It has XYZ company contribution. We have XYZ advisor running the investments. Stay involved, save as much as you can, don't have debt. So you can still produce the message inside of having fun. I think that's the part that gets lost is they thought somehow we couldn't have fun with doing these meetings. It isn't true. And we also don't have to spend money to have success of having an impact on retirement plan. So in the same light, um, I used to do these when we were, it seems so long ago that we were in offices together, uh, but we would throw a retirement party. The difference here is we would throw the retirement party in the cafeteria or in a place the employees are, and the only people allowed to attend just like you're entering a VIP club, you'd have a bouncer with red velvet ropes. You can only attend the, the party if you're in the retirement plan. But right outside the door or outside the ropes with your bouncer, you could say, sign up here and we'll let you in. And you should have a DJ, you can have popcorn, you can have drinks, and you can have games. We've had games where guess how many, in this case it was a chicken farm, so guess how many eggs are in the basket and you can win a prize. The answer was 401. So, the industry, it shouldn't be that surprised, didn't guess. Somebody guessed 400. Nobody actually guessed 401. And they were given a prize. The prize was a Cracker Barrel rocking chair. Because for that particular industry, it was more commonplace for somebody to retire and sit in the front porch just enjoying life versus the idea of going to golf every day or travel the world. It was more relevant to them. But same thing, have fun and make a difference. Um, oh, this is another fun one, too. This is the shh on practice in retirement. Back in the day, it didn't seem like ages ago, that you'd have people walk into a building. We would set up a hammock right at the front door. And in the hammock, people that were saving, you'd start with the people that were the best savers, and each person got 15 minutes to sit in the hammock, and they were given a cocktail with an umbrella in it, and they had beats over their ears with their eyes shut, and listen to music, and you had somebody standing in front of them with a sign that says, shh, I'm practicing retirement. And the point was, everybody had to walk past that person and say, how come they get to do that and not me? And the answer was, because they're in the retirement plan, you're not. And that day, if people signed up or increased their contribution, they were given a ticket, and the prize was the hammock. The hammock, or an Eno, and I have them at my house, they cost less than 100 bucks. So for $100, you could have an idea that definitely gets people talking. It's impactful, it's relevant, and it's fun. And then same thing, people will just go back and laugh about it and then what challenge you to, what are you gonna do next year to sort of step it up? So I'll continue on my fun ideas. Um, so uh, after the fun ideas, we can go back to the future, future ideas, which has sort of kicked it off. And I know that everybody on this phone call has fed people with breakfast or pizzas or subs or had a vendor come in. There's a difference here. The difference here will be the messaging. Manage the message. If you notice, there's no record keeper name on here, right? I mean, we, don't, we could have put our client's name on here, but what's most, and what's most important is there's no advisor name on here and there's no record keeper name on here. It's your plan, your message, and so we try to have fun with it. Um, the same thing is we've had hot dog parties. This one, hopefully, just like the food truck, you can have a hot dog stand just like outside Home Depot. They have them all. Have them pull up in your parking lot. And same thing. If they sign up for their time plan, they get a free hot dog. Uh, if not, they, they don't. But the point is make the messaging fun. It's time to have a frank conversation about retirement. We relish your retirement dreams. It's time to catch up on your future. We, you know, we, we try to come with mustard saving, but it sounds silly. So we... Didn't, we didn't produce the must-start saving one. But, and, and I think the point here, too, is that while these are silly and, and fun examples, every company culture is different, right? And, and the, the message that we want to leave you with here 
is the relevancy aspect, right? It needs to be relevant to your, your employee. So, you know, circling back to some of those points we made early on, using this type of imagery, whether it's using your own employees or something that is relevant to your particular demographics, day-to-day -day life, again, draws more attention to, to the fact that this retirement plan is an important part of your overall benefit package. And again, it's a, it's a refreshing approach to the traditional enrollment booklet or market update education that is typical still in the 401k and 403b industry. So again, it, it, they don't all have to be food-based, but it, the creativity and the customization is key. We, have a, we also have one that's cupcakes, and I didn't put it up on the screen today, but I'll mention it because it's fun too. The cupcake idea is a fun one. We uh, came with a recipe for a sweet retirement. And we pass out the recipe to everybody. You can make up what it is, but it's basically have some fun, you know, don't sweat the small stuff, save for the future, don't have debt. So some mixed in some messages. But the key was we passed out little cupcakes to every employee, and we focused on the fact that the cake tastes good and the match is the icing. So even though it's awesome and there's icing on top, the cake tastes good anyway. And so try to dial back this idea that you have to have a match in order to participate um, in the 401k plan. It just isn't true. And so we'd work every way we can to have to connect the dots between what they're doing and what they believe to be accurate. You know, I have to have an in-person meeting or I have to have a match. Those aren't necessarily true to make it fun, make it relevant, and have success with doing it. So um, I'll land on make it fun, but the next page, in fact, before you even switch to the next page, I talked in the beginning about the three Fs. So I'll remind you here again. Most advisors talk about fees, funds, fiduciary governance. My challenge to all of you is add this one fun. And I promise the fifth F. The fifth F is efficacy. It's not really an F word. But is what you're doing working? So if you go back and start thinking about, have we had the same results year after year after year? Without adding plan design like auto features, most plans have the exact same results. I'm saying if you start making changes like this and you have fun with it, it will feel different. And when it feels different, it's a lot more fun and becomes part of your overall culture. You've worked way too hard to build up your company. Why should the 401k plan look different than the rest of my company? So make it all about yours. And in that same breath, these, these type of campaigns and messaging um, that are unique to your culture and your environment does not have to stop at the retirement plan. Most organizations have multiple benefit offerings, whether it be health and welfare benefits, uh, financial wellness programs. Tie the branding together and, and utilize some of these ideas to also support and augment your enrollment process for, for health benefits or, or disability, whatever it may be. The key is, again, just the customization aspect and applying that across the board. These same lessons can be applied to any any type of benefit program that you offer within your organization. The, the only parts that don't get connected to a wellness program is hard to serve pizza and then say we should have a wellness initiative or give out uh, meaty tacos or gluten-free uh, pizza. There if it's gluten-free pizza or, or, you know, we actually tried to come up with the IRA IPA and tried to serve uh, uh, drinks at one of our events. It didn't go so well. But it is fun to have them wellness initiatives if they're vegetarian-based or something. But, but work with your marketing team. Once you get your own marketing team involved, use your own employees for images, your own branding, once they become involved in it, it makes it a whole lot more fun. And the other thing is connect your health and welfare programs, as Joe mentioned, because they can have the same exact impact as we can here. So my last idea uh, for today anyway, I have lots more, is to celebrate milestones. This is a big one, too, because while I pulled up milestone birthdays, 30, 40, 50, 60, it could be anything. But the idea here is when somebody hits a milestone birthday, whatever it's, let's call it age 30, why not send them a book? And the book should come from the retirement plan committee. It could come from your CEO also, but if it came from the retirement plan committee wrapped with a message that said, hey, at, at age 30 maybe, Again, they're thinking about starting a family, and you can send them a book on this. Or at age 40, it might be on saving money for whatever it is. It starts to change as you age, uh, and also, or it could be based on your dreams. Maybe it's based on travel, and what are you going to do in your future, or just based on financial planning. But if I got something, and it used to be a desk drop idea, that if I worked in an environment where there's lots of desks, a call center, or cubicles, if I dropped something on a desk, it didn't cost me anything to mail it. I bought a book. By the way, the retirement plan itself can pay for these expenses because it can be run through the 
ERISA budget account if you have one. Then you can have a message about the plan put on top of the book or inside it or even wrapped in pa like wrapping paper and left it for them with a thank you note, thank you for being a great employee, we wanted to celebrate your birthday and this was relevant to them. And another way that you can build off another idea, and, and this was likely more effective in smaller organizations, if you do happen to use the what does my retirement look like video, it's a great way to tie that in. Instead of sending them a generalized book, you can send them a book based on what they stated in their retirement video. If they talked about sailing and fishing, send them a book on sailing and fishing and remind them that this is their goal and send it from the retirement committee. Again, tying back that visualization, that personal touch um, will certainly get any participant who has not been engaged in the retirement plan. At the very least, we'll give them pause and have them give that moment to consider revisiting their savings goals. So we're going to land on our last polling question that we have for the audience. And again, building off of our first question in terms of retirement plan education, um, there are a variety of channels to deliver retirement plan education. Some plan sponsors utilize primarily the, their vendor, their record keepers materials. Um, some lean heavily on their financial advisor, or some create their own education campaigns um, internally. So our polling question is, is really, who do you feel is responsible for delivering retirement plan education? And, and there's really no wrong answer here. Just can't give away the answers yet. Let them vote. <laughs> okay. As we see the answers come in, you know, I think we're in, in complete agreement with how everyone has responded. Um, we see some answers that, that the plan sponsor ultimately retains that responsibility, um, which certainly has aspects that are, are true. But I, I think the answer of all of the above is, is really the best answer in, in terms of using all of your resources available to you. As we mentioned, your vendors, your record keepers have a slew of materials available, and some of them may allow you to customize those. But as plan sponsors, utilize the resources you have available to you, whether it's your financial advisors, education team, the record keepers, stock materials, or custom campaigns, or something that you develop internally based on your own uh, messaging and communication teams. It, it's really important that all stakeholders are involved in making sure that everyone's pulling in the right direction in a manner that really connects with your employees and is relevant. So um, innovation, as we've just proven, innovation doesn't have to be fancy technology. It can be as simple as bringing tacos out uh, or hosting a talk about retirement party or a retirement party or a simple 401, uh, you know, a happy hour 401 in the afternoon. By the way, we've also done 4.0 K runs and races as a wellness initiative that 401 in the afternoon. So we try to have fun and get creative and, and enjoy it. I think one of the keys to being successful here is taking ownership of the message, right, manage the message. Record keepers do a fine job at it, but if you manage it and it looks like you and it feels like you um, and it's your own message delivering it and videos look, again, from you, it's a bigger impact. Um, we also are sensitive to how much we're spending of, of, uh, on, on, on money to produce materials or paper enrollment guides that only get thrown away. And so we'd rather go to our rep keepers and say, you know what, hold all the paper, although there's a big news today that we're going to have to have paper disclosures. That's a separate webinar. But the, the big thing is if we can go to our rep keepers and say, don't worry about producing paper, these 100-page books. Give us some of that money back so we can produce videos and we can have fun with it. We can keep our costs really small and have a much bigger impact. And so that final F, not the fun one, but efficacy is what you're doing working. I do believe that if you continue to follow these methods and have fun with us, and please challenge us too because we love to share some of the best ideas with our peer group, it just makes it a whole lot more fun. We, um, my, uh, my offer to all of you stands that if you do host um, or offer your employees uh, a, a what does retirement look like challenge that uh, Chepnik Financial will provide an iPad um, to the person who had the most creative uh, or most telling retirement picture. We think it's important that we remind people of most, most important. The last couple of months where there's been a lot of scary things have happened, uh, it's also being home has provided many of us the opportunity to dream again and to dream about what will we do when the pandemic goes away and what's most important in life. And if we can get back to visiting friends and family 
and traveling again and visiting the world, then, um, then, then that's truly what's going to make the difference. And so if we can use the retirement plan to help make that happen, uh, that's great too. And with that, I'm going to land. I want to say thank you very much, Joe and I. Again, this is Jason Chetford. We're available to answer questions uh, or calls uh, tomorrow. There will be a follow-up. And, and if you wanted to um, you know, run with these ideas, these are yours to, to run with. So thanks a lot for being part of our presentation today. Thank you, Kelly, and thank you, Kim, for all of your hard work as well. Thank you, Jason and Joe. Excellent presentation. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you do have any questions, feel free to submit them right now in the Q&A pane on the right-hand side of your screen. It does look like Jason and Joe have a few minutes um, to answer any of your questions. <clears throat> Jason, did you see any that had come in during the presentation that you wanted to address? Uh, no, we only have, um, but we, we did not see that it came in, but, um, but we certainly look forward to following up with, uh, for those tomorrow. They'll have our access to our information, and uh, they're welcome to reach out to us direct. Um, but mm -hmm. Kelly and Kim, Thank I hope you. that you all produce a it video also that you can just share with the rest really of the crew of what we're trying to look like to you we as well. We really appreciate it and are thankful for your time. And we hope everyone has a great afternoon. And we'll send out the recording link and the education stuff tomorrow. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks.